This is Prophet Blaine, and you are listening to Worship Radio International, the world's number one online Christian radio station. Hey, 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 everybody. How's it going? This is Al in the house, coaching by Al. We're here again, and you are watching on Worship Radio International's Facebook page, or you are listening on worshipradio.faith. I want to give a shout out to everybody in the audience, the visiting, viewing, listening audience, whether you are a member of God's Holy Temple Church, or if you are a member of the body of Christ in general, or if you say, hey, you know what, I'm not associated with that either, but I'm just listening to you because you give some good information. Either way, thank you for listening. I have something for you today, and it always is going to incorporate or, or be connected to things that I've shared in the past, but the most important part is that you get it. So sometimes if we have to do things in a way to where we drill it, be okay with that because drilling is the way we get to the bottom of things, right? <laughs> Isn't that good? So when I talk about drilling, what I'm talking about is the same way in, let's say, the military, if you've ever been in the military or maybe you weren't in the military, maybe you were in ROTC or you know about military life or anything of that nature. When you do something repetitively, you drill it so that it becomes second nature, so that uh, even when you aren't thinking about it, you can still respond or react. That's what the whole purpose of training and discipline is all about, to get yourself to be able to do what's necessary to be done even when you don't think about it or even when you're not thinking about it or even when you're thinking against it. So when we drill something or go over it again and again and again is to get it to the point where it's so inherent in you that you will act based on what you, your body or your mind knows to do even if you aren't personally, you know, intentionally thinking about it. So that's what we're going to talk about today in a sense. What we're going to focus on is vision. Again, you're watching on Worship Radio International or worshipradio.faith. Some of you may be able to hear this on TuneIn, or you may be able to hear it on uh, uh, Spotify or SoundCloud. You may be watching it at some later point back on Facebook again or even on YouTube. So however you're watching it or listening to it, I thank you for doing so. And I always want to remind you that you can have your own show as well. You can have your own radio show that's, that gives you an opportunity not only to be heard uh, via internet radio, but also you can be watched on Facebook like some of you are watching right now. So think about that. Go to worshipradio.faith. That's the website, worshipradio.faith, www. It's hard saying that. Worshipradio.faith. Go on and find out what you need to do to become your own talk show host and reach your own audience. There are hundreds, thousands of people, millions of people waiting to hear your voice and you can bring it to them through a medium just like this. OK, so go on there or call Miss Linda Hunt, the executive uh, marketing director and sales director, and she can give you information on how you can get that set up so that you can do the same thing that I'm doing. And you'll probably even do it better. Right. Of course you will, because I'm just Al. But I'm telling you, you can do it. You can do it. And I want to see you on here. I have some pastors, uh, some brothers in the gospel that I would love to see on here. Yeah, Pastor Travis Mason, I see you, sir. You're looking at me, I'm looking at you, and I see you. I want you to have your own radio show program if you don't already, and you could do it right here on Worship Radio International. Pastor Yule Johnson, I see you too. You see me. Yep, come on, you can do it. Pastor Jojo Rasul, yeah, you can do it. You can do it. Come on, come on, come on. Go on to worshipradio.faith, tell them Al sent you, and find out what it takes. Uh, it's It's... A lot simpler than you think, a lot simpler than you may think, and uh, I want you to have that opportunity to be able to reach as many people as God will allow you to reach, okay? So that's for you, and for those of you, maybe maybe you're not a pastor, maybe you have information, maybe you have uh, a, a career in an area where you could be very effective. There are a lot of people on this station that have 
wonderful information and you should listen to them. I'm talking about people who can explain to you how to get your credit together, people who can explain to you how to be effective in the marketplace, even with your faith, people who can explain to you how to get your business up and running. We have several different hosts on Worship Radio International, and uh, I want you to check them out as well. Not just me, but check them out as well. Okay. But we're going to get into the topic for today. Uh, Dr. Stanley Scott, sir, I see you on here. Thank you so much for joining us today. Brother Darrell Beavers, I see you, my brother, my brother, brother, brother. I thank you so much for being uh, on here watching. And I also have in the house with me, oh, Pastor Grover Cross the Third. I see you as well, Pastor Grover Cross the Third, God's Holy Temple Church. We thank you so much for being on. And I can't see the rest of you who are on here, but I know there's some more. And I have in the studio with me today... The, the, the greatest man I know, the, 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 the kindest man I know, the man that taught me everything I know, the man who raised me, literally, uh, my physical father and my spiritual father and my pastor and so much more, Alfred C. Wilson Sr., Pastor Alfred C. Wilson Sr., thank you so much for being in the house with me today. <laughs> You can't see him. He's off to the side, but he's here and just just here to support. And so I thank you so much to my wife and my daughter who is at home. I love you so much. God bless you. She had a birthday this week. y'all. My wife did. And so uh, I, I, I'm saying happy birthday to you on the air. Now, let's get into today's talk. That was 10 minutes right there. <laughs> it goes so fast. Today, I'm going to talk about vision. Vision. I want you to grab some pen and paper. I want you to get some notes because uh, today when we talk about vision, I think it's really going to help some of us to do exactly what this program was inspired to do, which is to help you take what you already know and act on it, to move on it, to make things happen. Don't just know it. Knowing is not enough. Action is required. OK, that's the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is facts. Wisdom is the practical application and the proper utilization of those facts okay so uh don't don't just ask for the gift of knowledge for those of you all who are super duper spiritual don't just ask for the gift of knowledge and don't ask for the gift of wisdom <laughs> use them together okay use them together if i know that you are located at x you know blah 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 address on the corner of such and such and such and such that's not going to do any good if i don't give you information as to why that information was given to me okay so then utilize knowledge and wisdom together let's talk about vision vision is one of those things that affects all of us because if you do not recognize or understand what vision is and recognize it differently from just seeing then you won't be able to move forward at all let me explain to you why you can see right out of your eyes i can see you you can see me here's my eyeballs uh, I, I i'm sure you have eyeballs as well and and we see through our eyes but that is not vision our brain is what sees our eyes are for example if i can say it this way the telescope okay that's what our eyes are so i'm not seeing with my eyes i see through my eyes and that's different than vision my eyes Seeing through my eyes will show me. Adaris, I see you. Kimberly, I see you. I love you so much. That Kimberly's my sister. Praying for you. I love you. Mm, feel better soon. Pray for her, y'all. Seeing would allow me, let's just say we have a, a, a building, okay? Let's take a building, any kind of building, and let's say this is an old building. It, it, it needs a lot of work. Maybe it's dilapidated. Maybe it's, it's, it's uh, you know, on the demolition list, for example. Okay? Take that building. You walk into the door. What you're going to see through your eyes is different than what you're going to vision. Your eyes will show you walls falling down, walls that have holes in them, walls that need to be repaired, plastered, probably even redone. Your eyes will show you the ceiling falling. Your eyes will show you the carpet being torn up or the, the floorboards being ripped out. Your eyes will show you rust on pipes. Your eyes will show you uh, countertops that are just absolutely dusty and, and disgusting looking. That's seeing. Vision, for someone who has vision, they will go into that exact same room and what they will see 
is chandeliers. They will see walls with, with, with deco uh, painting on them. They will see brand new hardwood uh, finished floors. They will see beautiful carpet. They will see stained glass windows. They will see crown molding around the ceiling. They will see uh, beautiful duct work on the ceiling. They will, they will vision that. That's vision. That's seeing beyond what your eyes show you. That's what we need to understand, and that's what we need to add to our repertoire. You already have the ability to do it. You already have the ability to do it. Sometimes what we realize as we go on throughout life is that we've forgotten how to do it. Let me give you some information uh, or an example, if I can do it that way. Remember when you were little? Somebody's saying, well, look, I ain't old yet. Okay, remember when you were younger, <laughs> like maybe around five, six, seven years old, and you could take a toy or two toys, and you could create a whole community with just those few toys. And whereas you had a little action figure if you were a guy or maybe a doll if you had a girl, inside your imagination, you saw skate parks and and and. You saw rocky terrain and you saw uh, wars and you could see if you were a girl, you could see all kinds of I mean, I don't know what you saw. I'm not trying to tell you what you saw as a child, but you saw a whole lot more than just that stick figure. I know I remember growing up with action figures. My father probably got tired of stepping on my action figures at the house uh, all over the floor. But I when I when I got that action figure, some kind of way he was turning into Superman. He couldn't fly on his own, but I would get a little piece of uh, paper towel and <laughs> I would uh, pin it around his neck. And that was his cape. And I would throw him across the room and he was flying like Superman. I saw him flying over Metropolis. I saw him flying in and saving the day and he would rescue the girl. That was my sister's Barbie doll, you know, but he would go in and he would fly in and he would rescue the girl and he'd fly her back up to the top of the stairs. I could see all of that in my mind. That was vision. Let me, let me help you understand, for those of you who are super duper spiritual, what that was. That's called imagination. What is imagination? Imagination is the power of God for you to be able to see what is not. Uh-oh, that's sounding kind of familiar. Even if it's not there, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist in this natural plane, but I can I can still envision it. I can still see it somehow. What is that? That's called imagination. Everything that you and I experience physically in this natural realm exists twice. Everything exists twice. Help me understand that a little bit more, Al. Raynard Moore, God bless you. I see you there. And Kalita Blair, hey, you're back. The voice. I remember that soprano voice. Listen, everything exists twice. Give, give me some proof, Al. Okay. You ready for me to go here? I'm going to go here. Remember back in Genesis, for those of you who understand Bible scripture, for those of you who can read it, write it down. Go, go check it out for yourself. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, right? When he created it, what did he pull from? What resource did he pull from to be able to create? He imagined it. He saw it first here. And then when he spoke it, it became what he called it to be. It became natural, but it existed in the spiritual realm first. Everything, everything exists in the spiritual realm first. That's why we're talking about vision today. We're talking about how to get it from the spiritual realm or the imagination, if, if, if that's too spiritual for y'all, to the natural. All right. You feel me now? OK, Al, that was that was God. But what about us? The chair you're sitting in, the, the, the device that you're watching on, whatever you're listening through right now. Guess what? It was in somebody's imagination first. In this world, seeing is believing. In the spiritual world, believing is seeing. You believe it first, then you see it. You see, everything exists twice. So somebody came up with the idea and said, hmm, I wonder if there's a way for me to talk to somebody all the way across the world. 
Next thing you know, somebody comes up with the idea for the phone. They, they saw it in their mind first. That's vision. Beyond what their eyes showed them. My, my eyes at the time, let's say that was me who invented it. My eyes did not show me a way for that to happen. The technology was not there. I saw it in my mind. Okay. Then at some later date when the technology became available, when the information became available, then somebody was able to take that and to craft it into an actual physical uh, device that would allow us to talk to each other miles and miles and miles away. Started off with Morse code, started off with uh, uh, radio waves, started off with uh, telegraph lines. Then here comes the telephone. Now we've got to a point where we don't even need uh, actual phone lines. We have cell towers and it rides on waves just like the radio. Does. We have so many, but all of it started in the mind. That's why we need to understand vision. Based on what you want, can you see it? First, here. If you can't see it here, see, that's where we have to start. All right. So now for those of you who may have been listening, I was pointing to my head. You have to see it in your mind first. OK. And then how do you get it from the spiritual or the imagination realm to the natural realm? That's what we're going to talk about. <sighs> I'm going to use a couple scriptures today so that I can help kind of bring this point home. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. I'm sure many of you have heard it before. Whether or not you go to church, it's okay. Uh, let, me, let me explain it to you anyway. It says, where there is no vision. How many people have heard this? Come on, somebody. Say hello to me. How many have heard this? Where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. What does that mean? What does that mean? Where there is no vision, the people perish. First of all, we immediately take perish to mean die, death. Where there is no vision, the people die. Okay? But that actual word right there, if you go into it, what it actually meant, the actual real word, uh, for those of you who are Bible scholars, you know what I'm talking about. Go into the Hebrew and find out what the word mean. Where there is no vision, the people cast off restraints. What do you mean? The people let loose. The people release. The people have no discipline. It, where there's no vision, there's no discipline. Better example. Bring it home, Al. You can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> if you have... A, a plan. Let's say, for instance, you are a young person or you know of a young person that's in high school and they want to go to college on, let's say, a football scholarship or some type of sports scholarship or any type of scholarship for that matter. There has to be a vision in place of where this young person wants to go in order for them to be able to have restraints or have discipline so that you know what to do and what not to do. In, in, in football, I'm not, a, I'm not a big sports fan, but I know a little bit. In football, I know that the, the goal for the team who has the ball is to get to the end zone, okay, where the, where the goal posts are, where the touchdown line is, okay, the end zone. That's the, that's the vision. That's the goal. But along the sides of that field – it's lines, and if you go out of those lines or beyond those lines, it's called going out of bounds. Am I right? Am I right? So then, if I end up going out of bounds because my eyes or my vision or my discipline is not enough to keep me inside of those lines to get me to the end of the uh, zone, then what happens? There's a turnover that takes place. Some things for you based on where you want to go in life, some things based on what you want to do or what you want to achieve, some things are out of bounds for you. So then you have to have a clear vision, a very clear vision in order to know exactly where you want to go so that you don't go where you do not want to be. Am I making sense? I hope somebody is listening. If you're listening, let me know. Share this with somebody. Share the page right now. If you're on Facebook, share this page on your Facebook page if you don't mind. Help me out and spread this word. Spread this information. Because it's going to help somebody. It's going to help. I hope it's helping you. I know it's helping me. 
share it. Be sure to like it. Be sure to tell somebody, hey, listen, you should check this out. Uh, this guy is talking about vision today, and I think it's going to help you. Where there is no vision, the people cast off restraints. The people cast off discipline. This is why we find ourselves in trouble so many times, because if we don't have a, a true vision of where we want to be, where we want to go, if there's nobody speaking into us, about vision, if we're not speaking into ourselves about our vision, then we end up doing everything and anything. And what happens when you do everything and anything is you find yourself somewhere you don't want to be. So you have to have vision. You understand what I'm saying? I hope you understand what I'm saying. I hope you're listening. Now, here's the thing. OK, I get it out that I have to have a vision. I get it that I have to have imagination. We had imagination when we were little. But as you get older in life, you know what happens. You, you go through different experiences. You go through trials and tribulations. And next thing you know, life has just about beat down your imagination to the point where it's so suppressed that you can't envision yourself out of a paper bag. Everything is imminent. Everything is emergency. Everything is unbelievably horrid. And I can't see my way out. That's what happens when you stop utilizing your imagination. You lose your resourcefulness. You lose your ability to see things that are not there. So when you when you when you get to the point in life where you're starting to see, wait a minute. I can't see my way beyond this. I can't see myself being beyond where I am right now. What happens is you need to get some discipline. You need to get some focus. You need to, to tighten up on those reins that are, that are holding you in. Okay, it's getting a little too loose. Vision allows you, for those of you who are working, um, you know, who understand work nine to five, maybe you're not enjoying what you do. Maybe you don't, you're not doing what you want to do. But without vision, what happens is you only see what you're seeing through your eyes. And so you cannot see any further than that. So that's why the job gets so hard. That's why the job gets so mundane. That's why the job gets so, uh, oh, my gosh, it's just repetitive over and over and over and over and over again. The same thing over and over and over and over and over again. It becomes so frustrating to you. But if you have vision, what you can imagine is as soon as that clock hits four o'clock or, you know, as soon as five o'clock gets here, then your vision is already showing you what you're going to be able to do after you get off work to really work toward your dream, to really work toward your goal. So if your goal, let's say, for instance, is baking, let's just say you love to bake and you have a vision in your mind of being able to uh, have your own baking business. But right now you're at a computer in a cubicle and you're doing customer service or whatever you're doing, you're, you're running reports or you're some kind of analyst or whatever it is that you do. And it doesn't seem to be exciting at all, but your vision is showing you what can happen when you get off work. That's, that's giving you energy. That's giving you strength. That's reins. That's walls. That's containment. That's discipline. You see, you have a uh, you have a, a goal of where you want to be. That's what you need. And then when you have that sitting for nine hours in front of a computer, if that's what you're doing or or whatever it is that you do for the, the, the amount of time that you day that you're at work, it won't hurt so much. It won't be so bad. It won't it won't rip your heart out so bad because you've already got an envisioned uh, view of what you want after you leave there. You understand what I'm saying? So you got to have restraints. You got to have vision. You got to have something that, that holds you in. I remember there was a song in, in um, the, the, what was that movie? Uh, the Sound of Music, I think it was. And it says, how do you solve a problem like Maria? You remember that song at the beginning? It says, how do you take the sun and pin it down? Can you pin it down? You can't pin it down. How do you take then a dream and pin it down? Can you take a dream and pin If you change one letter from an I to an E. <laughs> no, I can't physically pin down my dream, but I can pin it down with an ink pen. You see? So one way to transfer from the spiritual realm to the natural realm is another scripture that I want to give you. 
Another scripture. For those of you who aren't so much into the Bible and all of that, I'll call it a very old, wise proverb and saying. How about that? Does that work a little bit better for you? <laughs> okay. This is from Habakkuk chapter 2. Many of you know it already. I'm not even going to go through the whole backstory of it. This is what it says in a synopsis form. Write the vision. Make it plain that he may run that readeth it. Give me a little bit more up, up, update, understanding, insight on that, Al. Write the vision. The word write in that particular uh, scripture right there, when you go into the actual history of the word and to find out what the real word was and what the real word meant, there's a few words that pop up. One is inscribe. Another word is engrave. Another word from there is enroll. Another word is enlist. OK, all of these words come from the word right. So so here we have. Anybody ever had a, a um, let's see, a, a piece of metal or something and you had to inscribe your name on it or you inscribe information on it. That's engraving. OK, that's engraving. That's taking information and writing it deeper than just surface level. If I take a piece of paper, I can write it on some paper. That's one way. OK, that's one way to transfer it from the spiritual realm to the natural realm. Or let me say it this way, from the imagination realm to the physical realm. OK, so you're taking it out of your head and you're transferring it from one realm of, of existence to another realm of existence. First, it only existed in here. Now, when I write it down on paper, I'm transferring it from an imagination station to a natural station it just do you hear what i just said I, I wish somebody just heard what i just said right there somebody ought to be shouting monique brown i see you god bless you thank you so much for watching did you hear what i just okay okay i'm gonna give it a second to 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 to, to soak in how do i transfer from imagination to natural. How do I transfer from spiritual to natural? Start by writing it down. Writing it down. What do you want to have happen? What do you want? What do you see happening? You see, just because you have it in your mind doesn't mean that it's going to, to, to just automatically poof, voila, abracadabra, whatever, and there it is. No. How do I get it here? How do I get it to this physical universe? How do I get it into the natural realm? How do I get it into actual, tangible, physical existence? It ha there has to be a transfer. There has to be a moving from one place to the next. Okay? If I want something that's in this room next door to me over here, what do I have to do? I have to bring it over here. I have to carry it over here. You can do the same with whatever's in your mind. Start by writing it down. Now, this is what the scripture says. He says, write the vision. That's the first part. Engrave it. Write it so deep that it goes beyond just your surface understanding. Write it to where it's, it's so deep in your heart that it lights a fire in you. And it's something that, that keeps you up late at night. Something that wakes you up early in the morning. Something that you can't wait to get to every day. Something that'll give you energy, something that'll give you motivation, something that'll give you power. I'm telling you, having a, a clear vision of what you want is better than, than, than eating eggs in the morning, if that's what you do to get energy. It's, it's better than drinking coffee. It's better than caffeine. It's better than cappuccino, Americana, whatever it is that you drink. It's better than that strong, crazy Starbucks stuff. Having a clear vision of what you want will give you energy. It'll energize you. It'll strengthen you. It'll give you power. It'll give you something to go after. Have a clear vision of what you want. So you have to write that vision down. And then it says, make it plain. Make it plain. Come on, Al, talk to me. What is it that you mean, make it plain? Make it very clear. Define it. Make it clear. Make it, what do you want? What do you really want? Don't give the miscongeniality answer. 
you know, from 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 the Miss America pageant. Don't give the Miss America con, uh, congeniality answer. No, 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 no. What are you talking about? You know, when they ask everybody that same question, if you were to win, what would you want? What do you want for for, you know, that one question they always ask? What is it that you want? So the Miss Congeniality lady who wins that trophy, she comes up and she says, I want peace for all nations of the world, be it black, be it white, be it colored, be it whatever. Why? You're trying to say something to sound good. The truth of the matter is, if you really answer the question the way you really, really wanted to answer the question, you would say, I want to have the Miss America crown. That's what you would really say if you were being honest with yourself. I want the sash that goes across. I want the crown that goes on my head. I want the little scepter that they put in my hand. I want to walk down the runway. I want that guy who has the horrible voice to sing, There she is, Miss America. I want all of that. I want people to stand up and clap. If she was really honest with herself, that would have been her answer. But because she was trying to be nice, she said, I want peace for all nations of the world. No, 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 no. Quit doing that to yourself. Be honest with you. Be honest with you and what you want. Write the vision. Make it plain. Make it very clear. Get very, very clear on what you want. If you say, I want more money, Al. Okay, here you go. I can pull a penny out of my pocket. I can place it in your hand. There you go. You got more money. Congratulations. You are a penny richer. Well, that's not what I meant, Al. Well, what did you mean? Did you expect me to just be able to re read your mind? What do you want? How much do you want? Well, you know, I don't want to sound greedy. Okay, well, all right. Sometimes you need to be selfish. Sometimes you need to be selfish. That's a hard thing to say. That's a mean thing to say. Al. No, sometimes if you don't look internally and find out what's inside of you, you will never be able to explain it clearly. Write the vision, make it plain. If you want $48,973,828.15, say it. Don't just say I want more. Say what you want. If you want to have that degree, in whatever your vocation is, say that you want that degree. Give me a day and a time that you want to have it by. Imagine yourself walking across the stage. What colors are you wearing when you walk across the stage? Do you see your cap in your gown? Do you see you, your, yourself shaking someone's hand as they're handing you your diploma? See it. Be very clear with it. Write it down. Make it very clear. Transfer it from one, from one realm to the next realm. Transfer it from your imagination or the spiritual to the natural by writing it down. Give detail. Give detail. What difference does it make if it's two or three pages long? Don't nobody have to look at it but you? Go ahead. Write it down. Get a journal. I always tell people, hey, get a journal. Write in a journal. Keep notes of your own life. Write it down. Create a vision board. I won't get into that part right now, but you know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, we'll show it to you one day. Be very clear. Here's the next part of that scripture, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to run out of time if I don't get through all of it. Write the vision. We're still in Habakkuk chapter 2. Write the vision. Make it plain. Here's the important part. That he may run that readeth it. In other words, make sure that what you want, your vision, is so clearly explained that if someone who just so happens to have the resources that you need to get done what you want to get done bump into you one day and say, hey, what do you want? You would be able to give them very clearly a full dissertation of what you want without them having to come back to you three or four times and say, what did you mean when you said this? What did you mean when you want that? What does this mean? Uh, this is a little vague right here. This is a little abstract. Can you be a little bit more crystal clear on what you want? Nobody wants to go through that. Nobody wants to go through that. If you're going to a, a, a bank to get a loan to start a business, they want to see a business plan. Why? Because they want everything detailed. They want to know exactly where they fit into it. They want to know exactly what your plan is. Most of all, this is really what they want to know. Can they recover the money that they are going to loan you? And can they do that expecting interest? Can they gain something from it? 
So they want you to be very detailed. So you have to write it down clearly. Write the vision and make it plain. If somebody walks up to you and let's just say you bump into a billionaire philanthropist and they say, hey, what would you do if you had, you know, or, or how much do you want? You know, why do you want it? Can you tell them? Do you know that there are people who are waiting to give money to some real vision? They're waiting to give money to some real vision. I'm telling you, if I had five million dollars right now, what I could do with that five million dollars, would it be to build some huge cathedral uh, with, you know, 750 seats and, you know, a, a grand stage? No, what I would really want to have with that five million dollars is a place for people to stay on days like today when it's extremely hot outside. I would love to have a place where we could have a daycare center, not just for children, babies, but also for the elderly. Because there's a lot of people who can't go to work the way they really would love to go to work because they have to take care of a parent or a loved one or maybe their children. They can't find proper babysitters. So to have a place like that where people could go and leave their loved ones there for the day while they go to work and know that they're going to be cared for, know that they're going to be treated properly, know that they are going to uh, have uh, proper nourishment while they're gone that somebody's going to look after them and care for them like it's their own. That's what I would do with $5 million. I would have a place that has uh, heat in it so that in cold days like this past winter we had, where, where, where it was so cold that just being outside could kill somebody, they would have somewhere to go. Not just soup kitchens. Soup kitchens are good, and I thank God for those who run them. But I would love to have a place where a person could feel like a star for a day. Those who may not have uh, the basic necessities in life, somebody who does not have, you know, a place to stay of their own. OK, wouldn't it be wonderful if there was a restaurant that was free for them? But still, I'm not talking about just, you know, any old thing, whatever scraps people have. No, I'm talking about a five star restaurant. Where you can come in no matter how you're dressed and be treated like royalty. Have a red carpet waiting on you. Have people outside taking pictures of you like you're like you're uh, a celebrity, a superstar from a movie. Paparazzi outside just taking pictures. Somebody comes in and a maitre d walks up to you and says, hello, Mr. or Mrs. Whoever you are and, and, and bring you to your seat. And treat you like you're a star. With no need to pay them. That's what I would do if I had $5 million, $10 million. I would have a place where people could, could come in and get uh, identification set up. Have a place where they could uh, go on the internet and find a job. Maybe if they're coming back from uh, being incarcerated, returning to what we call returning citizens nowadays. I would have a place for them to be able to go and to get training if necessary. Or if not, have a place for them to go ahead and get signed up for a job. Just because a person was incarcerated does not mean that they are not financially viable. It does not mean that they don't have skill. What it means is they've been away from society for a while. They paid their debt. Now they're back and now they should have an opportunity opportunity to make a living for themselves and be helpful in uh, the, the community again, in civilization. That's what I would do with five million. So I, I, I have it very clear in my mind. I, have, I even have it on my vision board of having a place where people can go and, and just get out of the heat or get out of the uh, cold air, get something nice, delicious to eat. I'm talking about good food now. With, with our food ministry at our church, for example, and I know I'm rambling here, but I, I, I promise you I'm not intending to. When, our, when, our, we, when we had our food ministry, we started off with a, a goal of being able to feed 50 people a week with bagged lunches. Then we had another goal beyond that of being able to give hot lunches to people. We had another goal beyond that to give people delicious dinners. I'm talking about dinners that you would get at any good soul food restaurant actually better than you would get at any soul food restaurant, that were cooked with love, that were cooked with real ingredients, that were cooked in a way to where, oh my goodness, you just see the pictures in your mouth are watering. And we did that. We did that. We were able to get there. We were able to get to the point where when people came and got a dinner from us, I mean, it took two hands to carry it. I'm talking about lasagnas. I'm not talking about uh, uh, 
uh, delicious spaghettis with uh, uh, wine sauce reductions. I'm talking about we had uh, baked chicken dinners and, and macaroni and cheese with real cheese. I'm talking about uh, we, ha we had del delicious stews with cornbread and, 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 and beans and cornbread. And so we had all kinds of delicious meals that were free. We didn't ask anybody, uh, you know, what's your financial background and how many people you have in your house. And we didn't ask anybody if if Bill Gates, billionaire Bill Gates, walked up to us, uh, walked up to us and said, hey, can I have a lunch? We would say, here you go. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. What can we pray with you about today? Because it had nothing to do with class. It had nothing to do with social status. It had nothing to do with financial status. We had a vision and we carried out that vision. And we want to carry out that vision again. We want to carry out that vision again. But you have to be very clear, very detailed about what you want so that when somebody comes up to you and says, hey, what are you doing? You can say, this is what I'm doing right here. And you can show it to them. And guess what? They can take off and start doing it. Has anybody ever rushed to help you? If so, why? Was it a matter of emergency? Because they had in their mind a vision of what you needed and they were able to act on it right away. Give somebody an opportunity to, 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 to fulfill the dreams and the desires and the goals you have in your heart by making it very clear, very, very clear. Write it down, make sure you are aware of it at least. And once you start to be aware of it, then it'll come out, other people will find out about it. Most leaders, man, I feel like I'm so all over the place, but it's all connected, I promise you. Most leaders, not most leaders, all leaders, are not looking for followers. Say what, Al? Yeah, a real leader is not looking for a follower. Real leaders have a vision and a goal inside of them that they're going to move forward regardless of who goes with them or who does not go with them. And what normally happens is when you have that goal so strong in you, when you have that vision so strong in you, other people are attracted to you. Leaders attract people to work with them. Leaders do not go out and say, hey, I want to be your leader. No, most people are, are not trying to be a leader. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., for example, was not trying to be the leader of the civil rights movement. I know that's really upsetting, but he was not trying to be. In fact, he was at the back of the room when the meeting was taking place. And because everybody else had issues in their past that they felt like would become too prominent if they tried to take center stage, they said, hey, we got this little young guy back here just graduated from Morehouse College. He's young. He's 26 years old. Don't nobody know him yet. He's a young preacher. Let's make him the face of the movement for this particular uh, uh, boycott that we want to stage. And next thing you know, because the vision became so strong in him, he became the leader of the movement. It wasn't that he was trying to. So you got to have a vision is what I'm trying to say. You got to have a very clear vision of what you want. Write it down. Start there. Another word for write in the Hebrew, okay, because you know that, that in the Hebrew, one word could have so many different meanings. Another word for write, as I mentioned, was engrave. Another one is enroll. Enroll. Do you remember enrolling in school? Do you remember when it, when it came time at the beginning of each school year you had to go and enroll? What was it that you were doing when you enrolled? You went to, check this out, I know it's going to be very elementary for some of you, you went to register. <laughs> what do you mean by that? You went to register. You went to sign up. If you are going to reach the next level in life, if you are going to achieve anything, first thing you need to do is show up. Show up. At least be there. When you go in and you enroll or you register, that's another word for right, register, it means that you are giving yourself permission to receive instruction on where to go. Okay, that's 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 not making enough clear sense. Think about when you were in school. You would go and you would enroll. You would sign your name up saying that I'm going to be a part of this class. I'm going to be a part of this semester. I'm going to be a part of this school year. So 
now you're on record. You've shown up. You have been considered one person who will be a part of this class. The next thing that would happen is you register for your classes, which means now you get a layout of your path for that semester or maybe two semesters. You know every day what class you're going to go to. You're going to go down the hall to this class, then you're going to go downstairs to this class, then you're going to go upstairs to this class, then you're going to go to lunch, then you're going to go back to that class, you're going to go to this class over here, you're going to go to that class, and then you're going to go home. So you have a path laid out. You have registered. You have enrolled. You have given yourself permission. I need somebody out there listening to me to give yourself permission again. I know a lot has taken place in your life. I know you had a lot of disappointments. I know things did not necessarily turn out exactly like you thought they would. And every time it happens, it chips away at your faith. It chips away at your hope. It chips away at your belief. But I'm asking you, give yourself permission again to achieve something. Give yourself permission again to dream. Give yourself permission again to go after what you really wanted in the first place. Give yourself permission again to, 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 to have a good life. Enroll. How do you do that? Write it down. Start by just writing it down. Start by just writing it down. Well, how about if I type it out? Okay, you can type it if you want to. We have different ways of writing these days. I prefer the old-fashioned method, get an ink pen or a pencil and get a piece of paper in a notebook and write down what you want. Enroll. Register. Register for your own life. You've taken time. You've been caring for everybody else's life. You've cared about everybody else's problems. You've gone to see about this person. You've gone to see about that person to make sure they're okay. You make sure that the church is all right. You make sure that the neighbor is all right. You make sure mom and dad is all right. You make sure brother and sister is all right. You make sure kids are all right. Now it's time for you to register yourself for your own life again <laughs> and do it. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Go ahead. This is your time. This is your. OK. I, I, you know, some things just sound so cliche to me, I guess. It's your season. It's your season. It's your season. You know, there are five seasons. You do know that, don't you? There are five seasons. There's winter, spring, summer, fall and do. Do. Yeah. D-U-E. Do. Do season. For in due season, come on somebody, in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Be not weary in well-doing for in due season. There's a due season happening for somebody right now. You just stepped over into it. You just crossed over into it. It's your turn. It's your turn. Now it's time for you to focus on you. Write it down. Get started. Write it down. Make it plain so that whomever you bump into along the way and say and they say, hey, how can I help you? How can I be of support to you? What can I do for you? You can say, here it is right here. Very clearly written down. This is exactly what I need. This is exactly what I want. Do you know anybody who can deliver it or can you do so yourself? Be ready for the opportunity when it comes. Don't not be ready. I know that's bad English. We know not, we, we, we know not to do no double negatives. I know that. <laughs> but be ready so that when the opportunity comes, you will be ready for it. Be very clear. Be very clear. This is exactly what I need. This is exactly what I want. This is exactly uh, what 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 would benefit me and others if I had it. And then. Start operating, get ready for it, do the best you can with what you have. What did Arthur Ashe say? Do what you can where you are with what you have. My father used to say, if you believe in God for a car and you don't have the money for the car yet, start going to look at the tires. Get four tires. <laughs> Get ready for it. preparation. Preparation is the greatest example of faith that we can show God. How prepared am I for what I'm asking him to do in my life? What have I done to the extent of my ability, to the extent of my natural understanding? I can prepare myself the best I can. Jesus said to this, oh man, I'm starting to sound like a preacher, dad. I wasn't trying to sound like a preacher today. I, I wasn't, but it's happening. Jesus said to Nicodemus, he said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. 
That which is born of the spirit is spirit. He says, how am I going to get these spiritual understandings to you if you don't have the natural understanding right? He wasn't saying that the natural was bad or that the flesh was bad. He was saying some things are natural and some things are spiritual. To the extent that you can do the best you can naturally, do it. And then when you can when you can go no further because you are limited by your natural ability, then there's room for supernatural. Did God tell uh, Moses to, to build an ark out of wood? He told him to build the ark out of wood. That was the natural. Then he says overlay it with gold. Gold represented divinity. Gold represented the royal holiness of God. Gold was the overshadowing or the overlaying of what was natural. So he did the best he could in the natural. Then he lays over it what God has. And now it becomes the Ark of the Covenant. So many artifacts he did like that. What I'm saying to you is see what you want. Use that imagination, that creative power of God scaled down, thankfully. <laughs> but use that creative power of God, your imagination, and start seeing some things again. What do you want? Well, it sounds like you just preaching a prosperity message, Al. No, I'm talking about living. I'm talking about living life. I'm talking about having all that is available for you to get. That's not being materialistic. That's being full. Jesus said, I would hope that you would be able to produce fruit and that your fruit will remain. Fruit means fullness. Fruit means everything has come full circle. You got to have vision. You got to have vision. You got to have vision because if, 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 if we keep acting like we don't have vision, if we keep operating outside of vision, we're going to find ourselves doing anything and everything, people. We don't have time for that anymore. You don't have time for that. You don't have to. If you are watching this and you understand what I'm saying, it means you are old enough to realize that you do not have time to spend another 15, 20 years. Preach. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I wish I had an organ. Mm, 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 mm. OK, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. You need to have very clear goals. OK, and the way you get it from the spiritual realm or the imagination realm to the natural realm is to transfer it, transcribe it. Scribe. Yeah, scribe. Speaking of which, if you have a book, an idea for a book, a thought about a book, you need to talk to your scribe publishing. Who is Yascribe Publishing? Prophet Blaine Irving. Go to worshipradio.faith and find out how your book can come to life. Right now, it's in a different realm. It's in the, in the spiritual realm. It's in the imagination realm. Transfer it into the natural realm and let it be a blessing to somebody, even possibly to you. Okay. I know I'm coming to the end. Hey, Ken Johnson, I love you, brother. God bless you, man. Ken Johnson and, 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 and uh, Sister Fatima, I love you so much. Thank you so much for joining us today. Vision is the key word today. It's the key word. It's the key word. Write the vision. Make it plain. Make it very plain so that whoever can help you can see exactly what you need. That's the issue with with uh, emergency rooms, you know, uh, in order for them to see what is needed. Sometimes they, if they can't get the information, they got to cut you open and see what's happening. But if somebody was able to say to them, hey, this person ran into a pole and they have a contusion and, and a, uh, you know, they have a, a slice here, laceration and they need 50 cc's of blood. I don't know what the medical terminology is, but how much easier would it be for them to operate and do what's necessary to get you back to health if they knew what they needed right away? If everybody who came into the hospital or to the ER room came in with a full detailed bill of needs, how much easier would it be for the doctors to get it right? They wouldn't have to practice. <laughs> they wouldn't have to try to see what to do. They, they would know what to do. You see? So you need to be very clear in what you want because somebody, somebody is waiting for a good vision to invest in. I'm right here. Hey, come on with it. Come on with it. Somebody is waiting for a good vision to invest in. Somebody, do you know how difficult it is for millionaires to get rid of money? Because people are not ready. A millionaire just can't give you a million dollars just because they like you. No, because there's going to be tax problems for them. 
and for you. And by the time the taxes are done, if you weren't set up in a way to receive what they have, next thing you know, they're going to lose 50 percent of what they gave you because they got it. They're going to get taxed on what they gave you. You're going to get taxed. So basically, at the end of it all, all you have is about maybe four or five hundred thousand dollars left out of the million that they gave you because you were not set up properly with the right corporation or designation or whatever you needed. And so now you've caused a problem for them. So they just can't give you money because they're not looking to lose money. You understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? So you've got to have a very clear vision and you've got to do the best you can to be prepared so that when that person and it only takes one person to change your life, when that person walks in and they have the keys to your future, they have the, the, the ability to say, hey, boom, do this for them. And now it's done. Are you going to be standing there saying, uh, well, I, what, I, what I want is uh, I, I think I want, um, uh, well, uh, you know, I was thinking about, no, it's too late. They didn't already walk past you and they on to the next person. Vision. Write the vision. Make it plain. Without the vision, the people cast off restraints. Without the vision, that people have no borders, no discipline. Get vision. Get vision. Get vision. How do I get vision? Take what's in here. Write it down. Look at it. Let it become engraved in your heart. Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Write down what you want so well to where it just comes out of you whenever you every time you talk, you should end up talking about your vision. And then next thing you know, what happens is somebody hears it and they say, oh, OK, I know somebody who can do this. I know somebody who can do that. I know somebody that's got this. And next thing you know, you're on your way. I got to go. If you would like to be a blessing, I'm going I'm to I'm jump in front. Of you. If you would like to be a blessing and help with the vision of this program which is to help people understand and take what they already know and use it for their benefit if you want to be a blessing to this you can do so you can go to cash app it's the dollar sign coaching by al llc and you can be a blessing ten dollars a month twenty dollars a month fifty dollars a month a hundred dollars a month five hundred dollars a month it would help it would help in such a beautiful way. It would help us to keep going and to keep doing what I believe in my heart is going to be a blessing to people. Coaching by Al. Everybody needs a coach. Everybody needs a coach. How do you get to where you want to be faster? Have a coach. Have a coach in your life. God bless you. I love you so much. Do you have anything for the people before we go? To you. All right. Well, then that's it. Dad, I thank you so much, Dad. Alfred C. Wilson, Sr., my father, for being in the studio with me today. God bless you. I love you. And I'll see you next week. Coaching by Al. It's real, y'all. Woo! This is Prophet Blaine, and you are listening to Worship Radio International, the world's number one online Christian radio station.